crazy we got today we're gonna be talking about the new m1 macbook air stay tuned i'm gonna show you if it's worth 3d printing on hey crazy will here from crazy will's tech show today i picked me up a new macbook air m1 because there's been a lot of reviews about it how great it is how powerful it is like the next evolution of mac now this is not going to be a review on the M1 Mac because there's plenty of those guys, plenty of those. This is going to be more geared towards the 3D printing community. And I'll have a little things about my opinions about this Mac, but I'm not really grading it because honestly, it's kind of not fair. They just changed their chip over and there's a lot of programs that need to catch up. And that's kind of what this video is going to be about. So I got the basic M1 MacBook Air. And I know right away that people are going to be like, oh, well, well that's, that's the MacBook Air, the M1. You need to get the, the MacBook Pro. Pro or the Mac Mini. Listen guys, it's all the same chip, it's almost all the same specs, has one less core on the GPU. That, and it doesn't have a fan. That's basically it, guys. Now there is ways that you could make this work faster without a fan if you put that thermal padding on it and actually connect it to the chassis, which there's plenty of people that have done that. And if I plan on keeping it, I may do it after a year, because the warranty is only for a year and I don't believe in Apple Care. Now, just in case you're not familiar with the MacBook Air M1, I'm going to put a list of the specs right Right here. Now it is a very fast snappy machine. I'm very impressed with it in a lot of ways. The ways that I'm not impressed with it is actually some of my 3D slicing software. Let's get right into this and show you probably one of the most popular pieces of software, Cura. All right, we'll launch Cura and this is 4.9. All right, and everything looks good. Moves really responsive, just like you would on a MacBook. Everything's really good. And I put in my settings already. I set everything up. So we'll load a simple file. So this is an air compressor regulator holder. So this is a little print that I recently did and I, I just opened it up just to see how this would do. So I go ahead and slice it. I'm gonna let this go off in real time because it is pretty fast. All right, it's gonna take three hours and 55 minutes to do and tells you all the information. Now what I wanna do is preview it. Yeah, that just happened. So, yep unexpected and it'll reload all right so I know what you're thinking will there'll be an update I'm sure there will but this is a new computer it's been out it's not super new it's been out for about three months roughly three to four months old cure is probably not up to date with it yet that's fine so I went on forums and everybody's having this problem so if you don't take my advice for it there's plenty of people out there that are having this problem well someone said go back to 4.8 Okay, let's take a look at 4.8. All right, so it's Cura 2 because I've downloaded it and you can go into the website and get older versions. So that's 4.8 as you guys can see. All right, we'll load that same file again. Okay, there it is again. Again, moves really good. Okay, everything works as it should. The problem lies into slicing. Again, this is pretty fast and it's actually moving faster than it did before. Okay, three hours, 55 minutes. Preview. Now I get it. I'm like, oh, okay, this is workable. I just have to stay with an older one. And you can actually, and it's running really slow. I get that, that's fine. It's as fast as I like to be, but it's actually working. And look, we actually get to see the layers and we can actually see how it's gonna present itself. So I said, okay, I can live with that. So I thought, now I'm gonna open up standing Baby Groot. And we'll scale him up to a thousand. There's Baby Groot. Now we'll slice him with supports on and it'll take four hours and 39 minutes, which that's not what we're looking at. We wanna see the preview. Yeah, the preview's kind of screwed up. And that happens, there we go. All right, let's see if it'll lock up the Mac or if I can quit out of this. Unresponsive. Now you might be wondering, well, it's a MacBook Air, you shouldn't be doing this anyway. Well, surprise guys, every print that you see up on my shelf back here, everything that I've ever printed has been done on a 2018 Intel MacBook Air, okay? Every so often, I'll be on my big iMac, probably 99.9% .9 have been done on my MacBook Air 2018 Intel. And I believe, I'll put the specs here, I forget what the specs are, but I believe it's an Intel i5, and it's only eight gigs of RAM. Basically, this 
same as this one, but this one has the M1 chip. So apparently there's something going on where they're not communicating very well with the chip. I don't know all the technical specs of it. I'm sure I can do some research and figure it out. But from what I gathered, it's a whole bunch of things so far from what I've researched to do with Python and the way it's translating to the chip and it's crashing it. So you guys might think, hey, that's Cura. What if you use Prusa? which I've been dabbling with myself. That's interesting. Brusa actually has the M1 chip covered and it does work pretty good, let me show you. Okay, this is the worst part about these new M1 Macs. The program's frozen, I can't get out of it. The only way to get out of it is to restart the computer. Before I show you Prusa's slicer, I'm gonna have to basically hard reboot this, which is kind of ridiculous because not even option command escape works, nothing. So now I have to hard reset my brand new computer. All right, so we're finally rebooted back up. I'm gonna click on the Prusa Slicer, there we go. All right, and I got my Ender 3 profile in here, and we'll go ahead and import a object. We'll do that same air compressor file. Go ahead and bring that in. Comes in nice and easy. We'll go ahead, I, I have default settings, I'm just gonna slice it. I don't know why it goes orange for some reason for a minute, which is not a big deal, but there you go. It's all sliced and ready to go. I can go through it, and it works really fast, really nice, just like it did in Cura. So that did work in Cura before. All right, so that's nice. Nice, that part works. We're gonna delete that. I'm gonna go for the more complicated model, the one that we were having problems with. Basically, Baby Groot standing. Rotation, the movement, everything works as you'd expect. So let's go ahead and slice this. Works perfectly. Let's go through the slicer. Bam. Works great. So needless to say, Prusa, you're doing a great job keeping up with your software and making sure that us crazy Mac people are getting a piece of software that will work. Have no problems with that. I think that works out great. I'll be honest with you, I guess because I learned Cura first, I prefer Cura. I am learning Prusa Slicer and playing with it. It's just, I've gotten really deep into Cura that I really want to stick with Cura and I know it really well and I like the interface a lot better so far. Like I said, I haven't really worked with Prusa a slicer that much yet so I mean I've done a couple prints with it I've played with it it has some really great features I'm just not there yet now you might be asking yourself, Will, you also have a resin printer. Don't you use Chitto Box? Yes, I do. But I don't think it's gonna work on the Mac M1. Let's see. This is the latest version of Chitto Box. And yes, I read all your comments. I don't know how to say it right. All right, once again, the interface looks like it's working really good. This is actually set up for my printer. We will bring in a file. Let's go for a basic STL file. And obviously this is way too big. It comes in really nice, moves really nice. Everything seems to be working great and um, we'll shrink it let's say 30% not only how it slice it but let's go ahead and slice it so basic settings holy crap it worked that's weird all right that's the first time that worked let's try it with supports and we'll just put basic supports in there boom there we go nothing crazy slice that's fine let's see I'll be honest with you guys this was not working before this is me with a true wow right now because before this this was not happening okay guys so that that's a big shock for me because i had it written out that this was failing it just proved me wrong so wow wow i'm really happy that chitto box works i don't know what changed the only thing i can come up with i'm working on this model right now and i opened up a file that i made with the intel version and i exported out i don't think that should be a problem but it didn't lock up the Mac. That's a pretty dense model. I can't believe it, it's, it's holding up. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna try and open up that file again and see what happens. I'm gonna come back to you. All right, so I don't understand this. I don't know what changed, but it's actually slicing that same file made from the Intel MacBook Air. The other day it was crashing, and, and now, mind you, I did have to do a hard reset on this machine to try to get things working correctly the other day because even with DaVinci Resolve, I was having problems and it was crashing, and I know for a fact that I've seen several videos where guys are showing the new M1 chip running running DaVinci Resolve really well. And DaVinci Resolve is known for crashing quite a bit. As far as my case, that's been my experience, that it's just 
kind of like Adobe. It just crashes from time to time. You know, you just do something that it doesn't like. I also want to share with you guys that Blender works because I work with Blender a lot to make my own models. And I think a lot of you do too. So I'm going to show you real quick one of my models and show you pretty much how fast this machine works with it. So this is the Rocketeer that I was working on and kind of gave up on. Well, I didn't give up. I just... You know, trying to find enough hours in the day, you know, get videos done. But as you can see, I can spin it around. Very dense model. Here, we'll turn on smooth shading, which I don't have any shading on it. But just to give you guys an idea that the lighting, I mean, I could spin this all day long. It has no problem whatsoever. Let's put it in wireframe. Sometimes that'll slow it down because it's a very dense you guys could see what the wireframe looks like, especially on the rocket pack because I was trying to get those details. And I haven't had a problem and we'll even go in edit mode and like I haven't really worked work with it I've been spending a lot of time with it and you can see it slows down quite a bit once we go into that But it's still pretty responsive and still able to handle it and just for those of you that have a 2018 MacBook Air and we're thinking about doing what I did and moving up to the 2020 MacBook M1 I'm just gonna show you really quick. I'm not big into the benchmark stuff, but I'm gonna put right here the benchmark benchmark differences. So this will give you an idea of the increase of power on the M1 chip. This video is mainly for the people that were into 3D printing and I just wanted to put this message out there so that way you guys know what you're getting into when you're getting the M1. Now I am a fanboy of Apple, kind of. I've had a lot of bad experience with Apple. I've had a lot of good experience with Apple. I'm a very in the middle person. Yes, do I prefer my Mac? Yes. Do I know there's other choices out there? Do I know how to use those other choices out there? Have I experimented with those other choices out there? Yes, 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 and yes. I understand the difference between computers. I'm not just one of these people that are like, well, this is the computer that I've used and this is what I'm always gonna use. No, I was a hardcore Windows guy. I just prefer Macs over Windows. I like Linux-based systems over Windows. I feel like they're more secure. I just enjoy using them more. And, and Apple's ecosystem is awesome. It's got a stranglehold on me between the iPhone, the iPad, the computers. It's nice that all my things sync up and I am a big person about syncing. Ever since my first computer and my first phone, I wanted everything just to sync. I envisioned a world where everything would just work together as long as it's under my name. And that's what Apple gives and that's what I want. I have 15 days to return this machine. I already set it up because I was planning on keeping it. It is a pretty fast machine and it's only going to get better as time goes on. So do I wait for Cura, which could take months, maybe even over a year, to come up with a piece of software that's going to work for an Apple M1? I'm on the fence about this now. I don't know whether or not I'm going to keep it. I'll be honest with you, Cheetobox working on this machine threw me through a loop because if that didn't just work, I would have just told you that I was going to send it back. But that just put a chokehold on everything that I planned on because if that's working, how much longer until Cure is working. That's it for me, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe if this helped you in any way. And remember, if you want to see more of my content, ring that bell. And remember, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Later, guys. It's holding its own. Wow. I know what you're thinking. Crazy Will's tech show's over. What do I do now? Real simple, guys. You hit that like button and you hit that subscribe button. And then you check out my other videos. It's not over. I made a lot. It's been a good year.